Now, so we're starting off with acid-base equilibria. It's a big chapter. You know, it defines how we'll be using calculations to find pH and neutralization and all that stuff. But before we do that, I have to go over the three acid-base theories. The one from O levels is called the Arrhenius theory, which is the one we'll be applying in most of the calculations. And that theory, by that definition, an acid was something that would give me H plus ions in aqueous solutions. Then we had graduated to a larger theory of acid bases that not just included Arrhenius acids, which were like HCl and H2SO4, but anything that would give me an, that would donate a proton to something else. And it wasn't just only on HCl. Like if you look at this example, even NH4 would be an acid. And NH4, for example, if you were to take NH4 and put that into water, what would happen? NH4 would become NH3, and water would become H3O+. In that reaction, NH4 gave up a proton. And in this case also, if I look at the backward reaction, NH4 plus plus hydroxide ions, may NH4 is losing a proton to hydroxide ion, and NH4 becomes NH3. And so this definition didn't just have H plus ions equals, it could be any form of H plus ions. There's yeah, examples H plus equals ke bhi hai, lekin or formations bhi hai. And you also had the idea of conjugate pairs. The acid on losing a proton became its base and that would be called the conjugate base. Like Cl minus here is the conjugate base of HCl. It's like saying HCl is a conjugate acid of Cl minus. H3O plus is the conjugate acid of H2O. Because in the backward reaction, H3O plus will give up an H plus to Cl to become HCl. Here, ammonia is a base because it's accepting an H plus from water to become NH4 plus. And water in this case is losing an H plus to become OH minus. So water can act as an acid and water can act as a base in this definition. Now, there's another definition and this is a much larger definition, much more encompassing. So if you can think of sets, you can think of the fact that this is the biggest set of acids. A subset of these acids, also these are called Lewis acids. So Lewis acids is, is the biggest set of acids. A subset of those are Bronsted acids. And a subset of those are Arrhenius acids. For example, in the previous slide, um, in this case, HCl is both a Bronsted acid and also an Arrhenius acid because HCl in water is giving me H plus ions. H plus aqueous ions are H3O plus. But in this particular case, water here is acting as an acid and becoming OH minus. But in the backward reaction, NH4 plus is, is acting as an acid because it's a proton donor to become NH3 plus. But it's not making H plus ions because H plus ions would become H3O plus. So they're being made here, but they're not being made here. There's no H plus ion anywhere in this equation. So in, this, is not, this would not be an, an Arrhenius acid anywhere in this. Because for an Arrhenius acid to exist, you would have to form H plus aqueous ions. And H plus aqueous ions are really this, H3O plus. So this is the smallest definition of an acid, Arrhenius acid. Larger than that is Bronsted acid. And a larger definition is the Lewis acid. Achha, wo aya kahan se hai? Wo aya bhi se hai. Because you think about this, when HCl is giving up a proton and water is gaining a proton, what is happening when water accepts the H plus? In this particular case, water is becoming what? On the left hand side, water is becoming what? H3O plus. That means what's happening here, what kind of bonding is taking place here, if you remember? Dative bonding. The water, the lone pairs are making a dative bond with H plus to become HCO plus. So the, the active part of a base here was the lone pair. Similarly, here also, when ammonia was the base and accepted the H plus, how is it accepting H plus? Because ammonia has a lone pair. When ammonia becomes ammonium, it's making a dative bond to become NH4+. We've also done this. So what you start realizing is that for a bronsted lowry theory of base to be a base, it'll at least have to have a lone pair. Because how else do you become a proton acceptor? 
the only way to accept protons is to have a lone pair to make a dative bond with them. So a larger definition was given birth that any base that ha anything is a base that has a lone pair. Because if acid is a lone ha ha proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor, the only way for it to be a proton acceptor is if it has a lone pair. So then anything that has a lone pair can be a base. That gives rise to a bigger definition, a Lewis theory of acid bases, where anything that has a lone pair and can donate that lone pair as a base. So acid is not just H plus, but anything that can accept an H plus. So before this example, let's talk about this. NH3 plus H plus becomes NH4 plus. NH3 is the lone pair, so that's the base. And accepts a proton. And so NH3 is both a Bronsted base and a Lewis base. Because it can accept a proton, it's proton also to become NH4 plus and has a lone pair. But if I look at this example, this was one of the examples we, I gave you guys in the notes in dative bonding. Where ammonia having a lone pair can make a dative bond with boron. At boron ke paas tha, empty orbital tha because boron ke paas incomplete octet tha. So this is dative bonding. And according to this definition, Lewis theory, ammonia has a lone pair donor and boron is a lone pair acceptor. So here ammonia is a Lewis base and BF3 is a Lewis acid. Now this is not used except for many specific areas like transition metal chemistry. So when we study it, we will say that this Lewis acid base definition. But after this slide, there is no need for this slide. After this slide, there is no need for the idea of acid, uh, Lewis acid bases in this chapter. This chapter from this one onwards is only talking about arrhenous acids. But I have to introduce you to the, this concept because it will be used in acid bases. Ka. So, let's move on and this is just an introduction and then we move on to the next thing. Which is strength of acid bases. Now to explain the strength of acids, we want to also talk about the strength of conjugates. Because we will do weak acids bhi and about their conjugate bases. Ke bare hi things like, for those who take bio might have already heard of things called buffer solutions and how they behave, and they behave on the fact that when you have to have a mixture of both the acid and its conjugate base. To understanding that, we need to understand the strength of conjugates, which is that we have to understand how these guys form. So, for example, HCl plus water becomes H3O plus and Cl minus. We know this is a reversible reaction, but it's really only like very, very, very small amount going backwards. It's mainly going forwards. So we call it for all practical purposes bolte strong acid. Hai. Kyun? Because it, we assume it completely ionizes into chloride ions. But it doesn't completely, it's almost completely. But practically we say completely. Because we don't have to worry about the small amount. It's less than even 1% that goes backward. But theoretically, it is going forward and going backward. In the forward direction, HCl is behaving as what? acid being a proton donor and when it donates a proton it becomes Cl minus so how does Cl minus so what is the opposite of donating a proton accepting a proton so when Cl minus accepts a proton it will become HCl so these are two opposite things happening HCl to Cl minus is donating a proton and Cl minus to HCl is accepting a proton so that's why they are conjugate pair for them to become the other, they have to do the opposite thing. For HCl to become Cl minus, it will have to lose a proton. For Cl minus to become HCl, it will have to gain a proton. So there are two opposite forces attacking. Now, this is then common sense, then jitna strong acid hoga, which means that jitni strong usko, jitna uska desire hoga to give out H plus, utna hi uske opposite karne ka desire kam hoga. Because it's common sense that if you one thing is more, the opposite will be less. Because they're opposites. So if HCl has a very great tendency to lose like H plus ions, which also implies that Cl has a very, very low tendency to gain H plus. Because if it did have a higher tensity, this will be more reversible. Then we will not say this is a strong acid. We'll have to say this is a weak acid. The reason why it's strong is because it's almost going forward, which means the backward is not taking place. If the backward is not taking place, it is therefore obvious the backward reaction is not very powerful. So in this case, HCl is a strong acid, but Cl minus is a very weak conjugate base. 
Are you all following this? It's just by default, and this is the, obviously the deduction. Now, this is what I was explaining to you guys in this. So, so basically, if a strong acid, its conjugate base will be weak. So, the conjugate base of a strong acid is going to be weak. But the conjugate base of a weak acid, therefore, will become strong. Another example is ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is CH3, CWH. What is the salt? Kya hota hai? CH3, CWO minus. So if the acid is weak, the CH3, CO minus, the conjugate acid base will be strong. Also, the conjugate acid of a strong base. Now, what's the strong base? Hydroxide ions. Hydroxide ions are a strong base. And when they accept the proton, acting as a base, what's the conjugate acid of hydroxide? Water. Very weak acid. But a weak base is ammonia, NH3. So its conjugate acid is NH4 plus. The acid has one more H than the base. And NH4 plus is a stronger acid. Now this is not strong to say that it is strongly complete dissociating. It's just stronger than this one. And this is stronger than this one. So if I'm comparing HCl to ethanoic acid, HCl is stronger acid than ethanoic acid, but when I'm comparing the conjugate bases, the chloride is a weaker base, and ethanoid ions is a stronger base. And same with hydroxide with ammonia. So hydroxide ka jo acid hai pani wo bahut weak hoga, while ammonia ka acid is ammonium, that will be stronger. It's the relativeness. All right? Then we have to define strong and weak in terms of ionization of acids also. So when I'm talking about acids, we'll be discussing things like pH, Ka, Kc from equilibria, K, pKa, all these things we'll see in next class. Mein. So this will make more sense then. But what we want to talk about is that fact you need to understand that the terms strong and weak are different from concentrated and dilute. Madhav, if I tell you that I have 0 0.000001 mole per dm cube HCl, and I'll say classify that as a strong acid or a weak acid, don't be turned off by the fact that concentration is very low. It's still a strong acid. Not that it'll give me too many H plus ions, but definition wise, strong means one that completely ionizes. So if I tell, give you 0 0.00001 mole per dm cube HCl, it's a very dilute strong acid. But both need to be taken into account when my finding things like pH, strength of reactions, and all that stuff. Rate, because rates will depend on the concentration. So ionization is really or concentration is really. But the terms mean different things. Strong and weak in, uh, are in terms of ionization. So strength of an acid is the proportion on which it produces ions. So you can have mostly, you can have perfectly possible to have a concentrated weak acid or a dilute strong acid. By definition, what's a strong acid? One that fully ionizes in water. So this is an example of writing a strong acid. That A acid plus water becomes H3O plus and A minus. All are reversible, but in some cases, the backward is so little that we assume it's always going forward. Good examples are, of strong acids are, HCl, HNO3, H2SO4. And weak acids are the ones that are not fully going forward one way. So we think of them being one way reactions, but they do go back, but thoda sa. So strong in your head when you're doing Sawal will now imply that an acid that completely ionizes. <laughs> All right. So when HCl dissolves in water, it makes H3O plus and Cl minus. Now what it means is that the very little of the reverse reaction is taking place. It means almost 100% of all the acid has become ions. So, and, so by definition, a strong acid is one that fully, is fully ionized in water-based solution. Other common acids are sulfuric acid, nice nitric acid. Phosphoric acid is considered a weak acid. And so is hydrophoric acid. Huh, HBr is a strong acid. But we don't use that. We'll use this HCl, H2SO4, and HNO3. Now, this is a simplified version of writing HCl plus water becoming H3O plus and Cl minus. Because H plus ions are really 
HCO plus ions. Aqueous AH plus ions can only be HCO plus. So we understand that, we just simplified it. And that's when O levels, you would write it like this. And in AS level, we introduce water to you guys in the equation also. But now we're doing calculations, so we can simplify this also. All right? So far, any questions? No? No? Okay. This is stuff you already know. Now we go to the new stuff, pH. This is the fun stuff. pH is a man-made expression to be able to quote the concentration of H plus ions of any solution. And why do I not need that? Because I don't just want to know which acid is strong and weak or concentrated and dilute. Because together they will give me one unit, one value, which is the concentration of H plus ions. That's what matters. For example, if I have an HCl that only gives me 0.01 mole per dm cube H plus ions, but ethanoic acid gives me 0.02 moles per dm H plus ions, I'd rather take ethanoic acid. Because in the end, I really care about the H plus ion concentration. What you will also realize is that most things that you deal with in the world, like your blood, for example, your blood has an approximate concentration of H plus ions as 0.0000001. That's how small the amount of H plus ions are. And quoting these small values is very stupid. So what we've created is we, create, we use the help of logs. Because when you have really small or very large values, logs comes in handy. You've probably seen this, that there was ionization energy when we graphs in the AS. We made it log. Why? Because the values were very small. So it was very difficult to make a linear graph. Logs made it easy to draw. Because very large values were made to make a log. In log kar rahe the. physics, maybe many times when you have exponential values, you use logs to linearize them. So we just said, you know what? We just let's use your log. Most concentrations of HCl, H plus ions were so low that we had to induce a minus. Because when you log a small value, the value is negative. Especially log of anything to the base 10. If you don't know math, then anything of any log, sorry, log of any value less than one will definitely be negative. So if, when we don't want to deal with negative values. So we said, neg this is a man-made expression. So what we said was, let's find a way to easily quote H plus ion concentration. So when I say, yeah, this acid ka pH 1 hai, aur uska 2 hai, I know which is stronger, I know uspe kitne H plus ions and so on and so forth. Because it's easier to say that. Then to say, yeah, uski concentration 0 0.01 hai, uski 0 0.001 hai, and uski 0 0.00375 hai. Why go to all these small values? Logs become it easier. Saying, yeah, wo 2.87 hai, it's easier than to say that's 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5. Why? Because it's longer. So we expression. We care about this. This is what we care. This is the science part. And this just made it easier to verbally and quote some places. So this formula is very important. You pH in those levels. You know low pHs are acids. You know high pHs are bases. You know the pH ranges from what to what? 0 to 14 or 1 to 14? No worries, we'll see it again. Okay. You'll be surprised. It has no unit, by the way. Because once you log something, the units disappear. You can't have units for logs. So, for example, the pH of HCl, you will assume that HCl completely ionizes. So, HCl ki concentration, you will H plus ion ki concentration. Nikal because theoretically, pH may have H plus. Dal hai. Since the ratio is 1 is to 1, then H plus ion concentration is also the same as this. And once I have that, I plug that into my expression, minus log of H plus. Now this is to the base 10. So this is base 10 logs, not natural logs. And then you plug in the value and minus log of that. And when you do that, you get the value in this case 0.87. Mostly you quote pH to two to three significant figures, uh, depending on the question. Now this is done. Then, what I have, when you have H2SO4, when you have H2SO4, H2SO4 will completely ionize to form H2 plus plus ions and one SO4 to one S ions. At this point, I want to definitely tell you that H2SO4, ki jo pehli equation of ionization hai, wo actually is just making a HSO4 minus and H plus. Pehle ek proton jata hai, phir dusra jata hai. So 
एक तो इन द रियल वर्ल्ड एच टू एस एफ ओर गिव्स मी एच प्लस साइंस एंड एच एस एफ ओ माइनस साइंस बट द एच एस एफ ओ माइनस साइंस वन एंड आइनाइज अगेन टू बिकम एस ओ फोर टू माइनस वो पूरा नहीं होता वो वो लेस स्ट्रॉन्ग है इट डजन आइनाइज फुली बट फॉर आर पी एच कैलकुलेशन वी एज्यूम दैट एच टू एस एफ ओर आइनाइज इज फुली तो यहाँ मैं ऐसे बता रहा हूँ बिकॉज ये एजम्पन है बिकॉज ये स्ट्रॉन्ग एसिड है बट स्ट्रॉन्ग एसिड ओनली फॉर द फर्स्ट आयनाइजेशन है सेकेंड आयनाइजेशन नहीं बट मैथ करने के लिए हम इसको फुली आयनाइज समझते हैं विच मीन्स आर डेट इसकी एक मोल पर डी एम क्यूब है तो इसकी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टू मोल्स पर डी एम क्यूब होगी इन दिस एग्जाम्पल द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एच एस फोर इज पॉइंट टू सो एच टू एच प्लस वुड बी पॉइंट फोर एवन यू माइनस लॉग ऑफ दिस दिस इज नॉट द आंसर दिस इज अ टाइप ऑफ हेयर प्लीज चेंज दिस टू समथिंग एल्स आई फाइंड माइनस लॉग ऑफ पॉइंट फोर कितना होता है I think it's point four also. Point four to four zero. So log of point four is also point four. Minus log of point four is point four. Okay. Then this is done. Okay. So moving on. So now you know how to calculate pH. So I want you to calculate these pHs. Find out the pH. For actually, you should actually have a sec, another column here first for H plus ion concentration, and then pH. Do that. So this is the concentration of each of these four acids: HCl, H two S O four. And I've given you four uh, things. In four of the H plus ion concentration, take out on the paper, pe, and then pH. Take out, and I'll wait. Okay. So. Moving on from this, what do you guys get? So the first one, ka H plus ion concentration is also 0.01, pH is two. Second one, ka it's 0.05 and pH is 1.3. Third one, ka is also one mole per dm cube and the pH is zero. And the fourth one, me, it's 2.0 mole concentration and the pH is minus point. Three zero, and so you can realize the pH can be negative. It's a man-made operation. It can be as low. Reality, क्या होती है कि most acids don't ionize more than five six moles per dm cube. So you end up being minus one तक जाता है, उसे नहीं लोड नहीं जाता. It doesn't go below minus one, but it can go in the negative. It can go to zero, and these are by the way acid concentrations found in the lab. इन दोज जार्स एच यू गाज है फॉर सॉल्ट एनालिसिस तो ये तो देखी दिखाई है और राइट नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन स्लाइड नंबर थर्टीन आई डू दिस दीज आर फोर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एस्ट्रो साइंस फाइन देर पी एच राइट देर पी एच एस एंड यू आर रियलाइजिंग दर पी एच एस इज द पावर ऑफ द टेन प्लस टेन इज पावर ऑफ Yeah, do it on paper yourself. You guys have that, right? You guys have your notes. Please do it there. It's okay. You can do it there. Okay. So, what do you get for the first one? For the first one, what is the pH? Three. Second one is twelve. The third one is zero, and the fourth one is three point three point seven. So now you realize that even things which have pH 12, which is basic, right? Because neutral pH क्या होता है? Seven anything above seven is basic or alkaline. Even those guys have H plus ion. And what you realize is that you can convert from H plus ion to pH because if you think about this, this is 10 to the power of minus three, and your pH was three. This is 10 to the power of minus 12, and the pH was 12. This is 10 to the power of minus one. No, no, third power of zero, and the pH is zero. So you can convert from pH into H plus using this. So 10 to the power of minus pH will give you H plus. That's why we have it. Because tomorrow I say, yeah, my best answer is that pH two is. The math it is needed to do any calculation is that I now know that its H plus ion concentration is 10 to the power of minus two, which is therefore 0.01. This is the math. That is needed, all right. So be able to find pHs and reverse engineer the pH to find H plus ion concentration. 
Okay, so let's do this. So what's the pH of human blood? Mine's a little more acidic than that, so your probably is 7.4. So what is the actual value in standard form? Don't just give me 10 to the power of minus 7.4. I can do that also. Find the standard form value, man. Calculate. How do you find out the pH, uh, the H plus ion concentration of this? You have to use this formula. Okay? And use that here. And what do you get? 3.98 into 10 to the power of? Minus 8. Minus 8. Okay. There you go. Then, what's the next thing? Then we go to weak acids. We have five minutes. We can start some weak acids. So what are weak acids? Achha, iski math farak hota hai. Weak acids ki calculation puri farak kyun hogi pH ki because our job now is to find the pH of weak acids. It was easy for strong acids because whatever they ionize, they form H plus ions. But weak acids don't ionize completely. They form an equilibrium. Therefore, how do I measure the equilibrium position? We've done this in AS. It's called KC. So if all equilibriums have a KC. So weak acids will also have a KC. And that will be a way to measure the ionization of this. Generally, an acid only ionizes about 1%. Most organic acids are weak. And ethanoic acid is about 1%. Okay, guys, we're going to stop here today because we're going to start this tomorrow. I know you love my class. I know you love chemistry so much, but we'll stop here.